Now then, welcome back to another episode of Agrarian Skies 2. <laughs> I literally just logged on. Just just logged in. Just got started. Uh, the uh, backup's done a little bit of a backup thing. And went over to the mob farm to kill what was there from last time over. And ended up with some chain leggings. Off something nice. That's cool. Like. Excellent. Still wearing the turd suit, so it's good to see the uh, chain leggings coming in to change things around. Oh, I I've left that up. <laughs> that that's not for this episode. That's coming soon, though. What? I'm infested with Tate. The dissolving goo. Oh, no. The goo. <laughs> there was an infested skeleton over there. I killed this infested skeleton and it dropped goo. And I've, I've just brought it over and I was going to dump it, but uh, yeah, pff, too late. No mind. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, yeah, hi, welcome back. How you doing, everybody? You're all doing good? I hope so. Let's throw that in there. Oh, uncommon treasure. I better check that out. Oh, what do we get? A diamond and a, some gold coins. Nice. Throw the diamond in there for now. Awesome. And the gold coins won't be used until Thorncraft comes around, so I'll put that in there for now as well. And my, uh, my TNT is not required. But the gunpowder will be useful for something. As you can see, I've got lots of resources here. Lots of things. Doing well with this... Oh, that fell down. Doing well with this here setup. It's become a little bit more obnoxious and overwhelming with all the pipes and cables and things that are going on. But it's just a, a rough test to see what's going on. Right? Uh, made some magnetic, magmatic dynamos. As you probably knew I was going to because I was going to use the lava supply from this crucible back here. Uh, this crucible that's kind of ever full. However, it's currently on very little lava. So it's it's just managing to keep up, keeping these two dynamos full. And these dynamos are keeping up fairly well at keeping power in the machines. Uh, this generator unfortunately still is not i had to set up a little farm over there just for the point of making charcoal and i haven't quite finished that off yet but this is all working quite nicely and i'm getting a ton of resources from it all like lots and lots of resources from it all uh it's just a case of processing those resources now to get the materials that i actually need like tons tons i'm telling you tons 12 diamonds now already as well awesome uh, cocoa beans are coming out, we've got cactus seeds coming out, we've got ancient spores, we've got uh, more jungle saplings, we've got quicksilver drops, we've got amber, and yellurium. Now yellurium brings me on to what you may have seen in the NEI. Big reactors is something that I was uh, looking into, and hopefully this week I will have a big reactor. I'm thinking that that's a kind of a, a good way to go, I think. I think that's a good way to go, get a big reactor on the job. Uh, that they require a lot of power these things especially with the upgrades okay so this is kind of well, kind of giving away what I'm on about here right with fortune upgrades this thing let's uh, take any eye off for a minute uses 60 RF per tick with eight fortune upgrades which gives me a better chance of getting a load of good stuff yeah uh, this guy down here I took the fortune upgrades out because he's only being dealt power by the generator and the generator just couldn't keep up so this guy doing gravels not very good but this guy who's doing sand is getting a lot of fortune this uh, uh, did i show you already yeah this guy is taking the cobble from the cobble gen and crushing it into uh, gravel the gravel is then going up and down depending on where there's a slot so it keeps coming up to here as well which means the gravel is then being crushed into sand should see one now there we go a sand and then the sand's coming across and going into here so this is taking one sand every now and again every now and again but we're getting quite a bit of stuff from that one sand every now and again uh which is good the yellurium dust though that came out of the sand which i'm very pleased about indeed uh that guy needs chopping down a bit are you uh, okay are you okay machine yeah, you're okay. Good, 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 good. I installed this just recently. Uh, a little, uh, a little bit of dark oak. Uh, it gives me apples and dark oak wood. Uh, unlike those that just give me the wood and the apples, 
this gives me dark oak wood. And I'm trying to resolve a little situation here and try and figure out something to make a, a little cobble gen. Uh, not a cobble gen. A little charcoal gen from it. Over here, I've got my water barrels now so that it catches the rain every time. And the mossy cobble is just growing naturally around it. I don't actually take the mossy cobble unless I need it. It's just developing nicely. And there's easily 9, 18 blocks. What is it? It's uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah. So there's enough to do two mossy cobble off a full harvest if I need it when I need it. Uh, these guys doing rather well. I haven't emptied them for a little while. I have replaced the hatchet a couple of times, though. I've just not been emptying them because I haven't really had a need to, really. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, I chopped down the other trees over there and got a ton more resources, like there's the dark oak leaves that I took down, vines and jungle wood, and we've also got jungle leaves ready for making more dirt when I need it. And I've still got five jungle saplings out of it, which is pretty good. That's pretty good at all. Yeah, very good. And we're getting the jungle spores, so we can get the jungle trees that way as well. Uh, I don't know why I keep breaking these, because I never actually make cookies or anything from them. So maybe I'll just leave them to grow. I, I just moved them because I needed a place to put them. Uh, over here, uh, you may have noticed in Magic Farm yesterday, if you haven't seen Magic Farm video yesterday, then take a look. Uh, this is a four-parent method of uh, growing and harvesting. Uh, let's take this middle one out. We've got two potatoes from that. That's pretty good. So we don't know what this is. I got just wander over to here, pop the seeds in, have a look, see what they are. Their growth for gain three, uh, gain six, strength six, which is not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, but then what I'm doing is I'm just upgrading the ones that are around it. Like that's a one, one, one. So I'll get rid of that one and put in the the six, the four, six, six, and that will make the next one in the middle a lot better. Uh, these guys over here should be a lot better already. So I'm going to take these ones and I'm I'm doing it four at a time. So I'm doing four uh, four parents. And one of the parents is being shared on another side. So in this case, these two parents are being shared. And in this case, these two parents are being shared and so on. I figured that this was a quite a nice, neat little design for uh, the four parent system to get going. Ah, the middle one should be a four parent as well. Four parents. So they're actually making several. So these middle four are the ones that I want to keep as the best seeds that I've got. To get the best in the middle there, uh, and it seems to be it seems to be working. Uh, I've not quite got a 10, 10, 10 yet, not quite, but it's getting there. It's a little bit of grind here and there. Look, growth nine. That's cool, awesome. Uh, yeah, it's it's getting towards the 10, 10, 10, and once it's at the 10, 10, 10, then I'll take it out of the nursery and I'll go and put it somewhere else. Uh, but for now, I'm just growing them like this. Uh, so they will go and replace some others there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dump them for now though because I don't really want to deal with it right now in video. You can see what I'm doing. Uh, same with the wheat. Same exact system with the wheat. I'm taking the four parent method and extending it to four four parent methods, just so that I've got the best chance of getting to ten quickly in all cases. Uh, but again, I'm gonna deal with that at a later date as well this is something that i'm doing uh off camera on both agrarian skies and magic farm 3 just because it's uh it's, i don't know it it's a bit of a grind it's fairly interesting though it's not it's not terribly uninteresting but it is uh replant wait 10 minutes replant wait 10 minutes replant until eventually you've got something decent going on with the seed being analysed and doing all the good things. Uh, but I've got enough food, basically. I've got plenty of food from this. There's no spice of life necessarily stopping me from eating as much of one type as I like. So I've got uh, a potato crop from there that I've been getting. I've got some lettuce and I've got some bread and there's some pumpkins behind there. Because I like to use the pumpkins for my light source. So I keep growing those to get pumpkins for the light source. Uh, but that's enough of the farming side of things. Let's get technical. 
Uh, I want to do something with this that will give me a ton of resources all day, every day, like this, just filling things up and sorting them all out. Uh, I've got to figure out a little sorting system for it all, and there's a few options for that. Uh, let me put this back on. There's a few options for that in this particular mod pack. We've got uh, the, the compact storage, which gives us a few chests and things and bits and pieces and a few little backpacks and stuff that's cool. We've got... Do, 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 where's the next one down that we're looking at? We've got Jabba. Just nice, simple Jabba barrels, which will be useful for all sorts of things. We've got some... Uh, 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 mine factory reloaded, which I can't get into yet, but deep storage units and stuff in there. And we've got, we've got, we've got refined relocation, which is pretty awesome. We used to play around with that a little bit in the days of Utopia when we were testing out the mod for the first time. There's got a few more things in it that they didn't have before, but the sorting chest uh, and sorting connectors and things like that was a pretty awesome little thing. I might do something like that, because that might tie in very nicely with something I'm doing. Router Reborn as well. I love the routers from uh, Factorization. And this is the Router Reborn, so I'm, I've got to try it, at least. I don't know if it's going to be what I need to use for. Refined Relocation might be something that's a little bit more in keeping with what I can do right now. Like, we've got Sorting Barrels, so I can combine the Jabber with uh, Refined Location. Uh, let's have a look. Look, it's only a couple of gold to make a sorting chest. Uh, it's it's only a glass pane and a couple of gold to get an upgrade for a, a normal chest. And it's only a glass pane and a few gold nuggets to get an upgrade for a barrel. And then we've got these little extractors and things which do cost a lot more. But once I've got things up and running nicely, we should have a lot of fun with this side of stuff. So I'm thinking that this is going to be good. Also, it's got a filtering hopper. Which I am very pleased to see. Having a hopper that filters things out is very cool. And it's cheaper in resource-wise, potentially, than going with the extra utilities, nodes and pipes. Uh, potentially. Keep an eye on this hopper. So it's like five bits of iron, four bits of gold. Whereas one of these is a block of redstone. So that's the only thing really that's of giving me some sort of like problem is if I don't have enough redstone but once I'm uh, constantly making this kind of stuff we should be getting a lot of redstone coming in uh, what I want to do today I've got a little area set up down here that I want to expand on this is what I've come up with so far right taking the basic principles we've got up here already and starting to set something out down here I've put uh, a row of lava, which I created from the crucible upstairs and then from the crucibles down here. A load of lava along here doing eight crucibles. And there's a cobblestone gen. There's water going in and lava. And that cobblestone block there has got a, a little extra utilities node with a world interaction upgrade that then puts cobble. And I've put a rationing pipe across here so that it'll try and evenly spread it. I don't think it really matters now that that rationing pipe's there, but when it starts getting used a lot, then I'm guessing the rationing pipe will kick in and help keep things evenly spaced. I've got a second uh, cobblestone gen. I've got two cobblestone gens because of symmetry, and I've got eight of those crucibles making lava because I think I need a lot of lava. I've also got these magmatic dynamos, which you've already seen, and I'm thinking that a couple of magmatic dynamos, with this setup that I've got now, uh, maybe another hammer or two, and set it all up again downstairs so that I'm only using the magmatic dynamos for power and I'm only using the sieves for sand. Sieves for sand so I can get yellurium dust. Okay? So I'm going to rip this down, move things around, and get something set up down there to show you right now. Alrighty, well, first up, I've got to move uh, fluids and, item, uh, and energy around. 
So I've been looking at the new thermal expansion ducts and they're less expensive than the extra utilities alternatives. So, uh, yeah, for instance, the fluid ducts, this is, let's see, temperate fluid duct um, will break if the contents are extremely hot or cold. Well, I'm moving lava, so they're not good enough for me. These flux plated fluid ducts, uh, nope, they're hardened fluid ducts. Uh, contents may be any temperature. Transfer rate varies by fluid. That's fine. But the content may be any temperature is important. So these fluxed ones are lead with some invar. Makes six. And I need to get uh, eight crucibles emptied of lava. So I'm going to take 12 of these hardened cells. Uh, hardened uh, flux ducts. Flux ducts, fluid ducts, <laughs> fluid ducts, yeah. And then to transfer the energy, obviously an energy node. The, the alternative here would be um, an, an extra utilities node, which cost me a block of redstone to make, and a couple of bits of lapis and that to make a fluid, a fluid transfer node. So this is by far cheaper to do it this way, and potentially doing some new stuff is cool. And then for tra doing the energy, the energy nodes in Extra Utilities require quite a lot of crafting. Because I think I need a QED for it. Whereas this is Leadstone Energy. And it does 200 RF per tick still. Which is still pretty good. Transfer amount as per connected a connection. Which is awesome. So I think I'm going to need just the six of those. I don't think I'm going to need more than six. If I do, I've got a little bit left over. Uh, so the recipe was pretty straightforward, wasn't it? Yeah. A little bit of redstone, which I'm currently down to four. So I'd have to do some more sieving to get to more, which is why I haven't done the more. Yeah. Throw that back in there. Okay. And <clears throat> I've got to set this up, but now we need these little end pieces to it. Uh, thermal. Now we need these little uh, nodes on the end of, the servos on the end of. So this servo... Extraction rate 3 seconds, max stack size 4, filter blacklist, ex fluids extraction rate 50%. 50% is probably all I actually need for the lava because I'm not going to need that much lava going into those magmatic diamond nodes. So let's have a look. We need a piece of glass and a couple of iron nuggets, a couple of iron ingots and a piece of redstone to get two. So I will need four of this recipe. Four redstone. Four redstone. I've got four redstone. So I'm going to make those in a minute as well. Uh, and I think I've got to put those onto the ends of these now. Uh, I had one that I'd used upstairs that cost me a, a fair bit before. But now I'm happy that I don't have to use this. So I'm going to take that off. Thank you. And I'll use that for something else. Because that the recipe for that quite expensive with a block of redstone and all the iron so i'm doing it this way around uh let's see hardened fluid ducts first up then let's place some fluid ducts actually it's already got a thing going on there i wonder if that already does something then no it's got to have a servo it's got to be servos on them i'm sure of it i haven't played around with them yet so maybe that'll be different but i'm pretty sure it needs servos on them and then I've got things like these magmatic dynamos. And I've currently got three. I, I broke these and they didn't stack. So I'm hoping that they keep some sort of power. And I think I can possibly... Like if I leave a little gap and then put them onto there like this. I don't know. I may need to change this around a little bit before too long. Um, I want to sort of bring it out a little bit just so that it fits and I can walk in and still see what's going on and attach all these servos and maybe change things around so let's have uh, let's have three points of coming off it one two three yeah that'll do for now uh, I probably will have more coming off it but I wanted just at least those first three just to make it easier uh, or actually Let's get this back. Did I get it? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where'd you go? Oh, there you are. Come here. Thank you. You're too expensive not to keep hold of. Up there, and we'll have a double one coming out there. 
Okay, so now we're going to do power. And what have I actually got in these already? Nothing. Okay. Now that one's still holding its power. Okay, that's why they're all different. And I think I'll put one over this side as well. That's currently holding all its power as well. So when I ripped it down with a pickaxe, it holds its power. That's odd. I didn't expect that to happen. Okay, so now I need the servos to get that going. And then I can use the uh, energy from these to start powering the initial system. And the initial system I've got to keep really tight. Because I'm going to build something else over this side. So I need to keep it tight now. But I was just hoping that I could have a little run that I can just get my head underneath the pipes just enough. And that seems to work perfectly there. My first little test was successful. So I'm using the rest of my redstone up. The idea here is that I get my redstone working uh, to make this work, to make more redstone. So what we've got is from the setup we had here with the dynamos, I made myself a little crescent hammer so that I could quickly change the uh, direction of these dynamos into these machines. And I've put the first two servos on there and there. And it very quickly emptied out the crucible. So, yeah, it, it's pretty pretty drainy, right? But, 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 but they only carry four buckets of lava each. So they'll get to a point where this is full. This is now full. And this is now full. And they will then just store the lava and store the power. In theory, store the lava, store the power and same here so i just need to release the rest of this lava out into them to get them going and all this is now is you just place it on and then there's a few other bits and pieces that i can do but there's nothing that i need to do with this i'm just disabling the redstone requirement so it can pump them out all the time and it only seems to be on the outputs that you use these things uh, which is interesting because uh, Previously, I had to make this like an input and then an output, but it was all done with a crescent hammer before. Nowadays, you've got to just do it this way, which gives us more options on the uses and such. And uh, we we don't we, we don't cost too much, I suppose. You used to put servos on anyway to make things happen, uh, to get controls like blacklisting and NBTs and all that. But this now, I'm guessing there's upgrades that we can put into these servos to increase the speed of things and the like. There's already a lot of extras here that you can do. Like there's a retrieval, retriever, pools items, pools items, pools items, which could be interesting. It's very much like the extra utilities. And I think that's probably something that they've been looking at and going, why can't we do something like that? Eh? Why can't we do that? Uh, so now all of these are full of lava and power and this lava supply should start filling back up again fairly swiftly. So that's that's good. That's where we wanted to be right now. Now, why a pulverizer and two of these hammers? Well, I saw the pulverizer as being an option and I made one and it didn't work. So now I'm, <laughs> I'm damned if I'm going to throw it away. So I'm using it here for this. And I think I'm going to put one on this side as well. I think that works out that I can have two hammers and two pulverizers working off this system. Hopefully pretty much full time. Hopefully. Depends on the lava supply. If those eight crucibles can keep up with four magmatic dynamos keeping up with uh, two hammers and two pulverizers, then I'm good. I'm golden. Uh, the reason I put the pulverizers to one side is I want to bring the cobblestone out from the cobblestone generators into the sides of the pulverizers so from directly here i'm going to bring them out i could actually bring it in over the top couldn't i so let's do the top there we go so now i want to accept cobblestone into the top there there we go and now this should pulverize down into gravel and occasionally a side product of sand, I'm hoping. I think there's a recipe. Let's see if we can find cobble. Yeah, cobble, gravel with a, a percentage chance of getting sand. So I'm feeding gravel into these hammers to make sand. And the pulverizer will generate sand itself as well. So I'm technically going to have four outputs of sand, is my theory, is my plan. 
Uh, I need a transfer node. I've got two transfer nodes. I only actually need one at the moment, I think, just to do this bit. So I need one transfer node on there. Could potentially use an item duct rather than a transfer node, but we, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I've got the transfer nodes from previously, so we'll do that. And I also, I was going to use the leadstone energy to uh, power it, but as I can get underneath here already, I don't feel the need to do that. Uh, right, so this is now going to deliver sand. Uh oh, oh I've got a problem there, haven't I? Let's take that one off. Did that just deliver some cobble? Yes, it did. Okay. And that, yeah, I'll take that out in a minute. Sort that out. Uh, I'm going to need to deliver it from the front then. Or put uh, a microblock in between. I'm going to I'm gonna make a, a, a forge microblock um, saw, actually. I'm going to make a saw because I wanted one anyway. Uh, let's see. Do I have... Uh, yeah, I've got some flint. And can I still make a, a stone rod? Yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, I don't know how many it is exactly, so I'll do a bit because I'll probably need it anyway. And that's filled with that. Is it still the same same old recipe with a handle? Yes, it is. Awesome. So can I just cut one of these blocks down into a cover? Yes, I can. Awesome. I like. That's fitting. That's good. Okay. So now I can do this instead, which will block off the connectivity there. And I want to also block off the connectivity to this thing here. Can I get that in the right place? Yes, I can. Okay, and then can I get it to go up? Yes, I can. Okay, so it's not trying to go into the side. That just looked awkward. It doesn't actually make any difference to me, but that just looked awkward. It's going to try and go in here. And from the other side, the second pulverizer that I make will do the same thing, just on the opposite side. Looping what we're going to show as the gravel into the hammers. So the gravel is going to go out the side there. Going to go into this, picked up the gravel. And then that's going to go into our hammerers to start hammering out the gravel into sand, hopefully. So both of these should start receiving it. Ah, I see. That's going to be filling up first. Not a problem there. Not a problem. I'm gonna have that fitting up. For, can I? Is this? Is this putting it in there? No, that's okay. I thought for a minute there that it was putting the gravel into the main slot here, and I don't think you can put anything into this slot, so I shouldn't think it could. But now that's making sand. This is now making sand. Uh, this one will soon be up to speed making sand because it never gets through that much gravel that it will empty out completely. So this one will soon enough with two transfer nodes from two pulverizers doing constant work they should easily keep up shouldn't they yeah 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 should easily keep up uh next <clears throat> i've got a difficult little section next because i need to get a transfer node on the bottom here i may use item hoppers or i've got to go down a little bit water elevator down a little bit to uh, place blocks underneath them so, firstly, uh, I do have the hoppers. I'm I'm going to use the hoppers. I'm going to use the hoppers because they're easier than uh, easier and cheaper than the item transfer nodes, and I'm kind of bringing them straight forwards. Uh, oh, there was a reason. That was a reason why I had the idea I was going to use the power. Oh yeah. I was going to use the power because I needed to put in the sieves. I needed to power the sieves as well. Okay, so, 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 so. How fast are these building up again? I think these are building up okay. These are doing fairly well, actually. They're doing, they're doing quite good. Uh, yeah. So maybe, just maybe, if I put these two sieves on the floor here. Uh, let's try this here now. Man, this is such experimentation. Let's, let's just put the sieves like this. Okay. I will need to potentially put item transfer nodes on the side of them, or on the front of them, should I say. 
Let's put a hopper going straight into it like that. Yep, yeah, that's doing it. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And another one into there. Okay. I can't get out of here anymore. That's it. Go under here. Okay. So that's that doing. Yeah. They're both getting sand from their two hammerers. And I would duplicate that here as well for the pulverizer. And here as well for the pulverizer. So they're all basically pulverizing sand. Yeah. They're all basically pulverizing sand. And then get the transfer nodes. Um, could put them on the side and then come forwards into barrels. Or I could put them on the front like this. Uh, I don't know if this is actually going to pull anything out though. Because these haven't got any power. They're not going to do anything yet, are they? So let's just change that around a little bit. Um, I'm thinking now that if I take this off here like this where'd it go went into my inventory jolly good if i put this here instead right uh, bear with me and i'll swap these ones around as well so this one here uh change the direction to being down yeah that'll work yeah i could still get in behind here yeah uh, put the leadstone energy there. I don't know if this needs a server. I might need a servo for that. I may need a servo for that. But then I could bring the power underneath or over top. I could. I want to see it working, really. It would be nice if I could see it working, wouldn't it? Maybe if I put those underneath. Hmm. I just want to get it started, anyway. Let's see about getting some redstone energy into there uh yeah i don't need any servos on this stuff okay so a little bit of rearranging so i can see everything i would like to see the hammers over the sieves so i want to put these transfer nodes somewhere else on the overall thing and i would like to power it somehow else as well uh maybe maybe powering from the sides and taking out from the bottom but that's even further down than i wanted for this Hmm. <laughs> I'll think about it a bit more. And I'll mess around with it a bit more. And I'll add another uh, another magmatic dynamo to make four magmatic dynamos. And I'll add another pulverizer as well. And I'll add another two sieves with all of this output going into a nice little chest somewhere. Uh, yeah, it is taking them out. Okay. So what I'm going to be looking for is the Yellurium is the main thing that this is set up for is to get Yellurium into a chest so that I can start on the big reactor because I've got a cunning plan for the big reactor and all of the other byproducts the byproducts being a huge array of stuff that we actually want to keep I may as well not do sand for those products anywhere else I'm going to take the Yellurium and all of those products and just distribute it around to somewhere over here and then I'm going to use the Illyrium to make the big reactors and the big reactors to sieve, auto-sieve everything else. The big reactor is going to be my power supply for everything else. I think that's going to look cool. Alright, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to say goodbye in my turdy suit. Uh, I think I've done enough waffling for today. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, another episode of Agrarian Skies 2. Thank you all very much. I'll catch you in the comment section. Don't forget to leave a like. See you next episode. And goodbye.